The greatest history book ever written is the one hidden in our DNA. That's according to Spencer Wells, an American geneticist and anthropologist who discovered that all humans originated on the African continent. Florida prosecutors read the hidden history book that is DNA when they decided to use it as evidence of Tommy Lee Andrews' crimes. In 1987, prosecutors in Orlando, Florida used DNA evidence to convict Tommy Lee Andrews of rape, breaking a boundary in the criminal justice system. It opened a new frontier for law enforcement, leading to the creation of national DNA databases to aid in the identification of criminals. And since then, DNA has played a key role in thousands of trials. DNA, aka deoxyribonucleic acid, is found in the nucleus of cells, and it carries the genetic information for all living things. Since DNA is unique to an individual, with the exception of identical twins, it can play a major role in investigations. The United States Department of Justice said that DNA can be used to identify criminals with incredible accuracy when biological evidence exists. They also said that DNA can clear suspects and exonerate people who are mistakenly convicted or accused. In a case when a suspect is identified, they can use a sample of the suspect's DNA to compare it to the DNA samples found at a, at a crime scene. Another way that DNA can be used in an investigation is to help identify a suspect. They can run the DNA through national DNA indexes. When Florida prosecutors first used DNA evidence, they created a new frontier. Tommy Lee Andrews' case might have been the first time DNA evidence was used in the United States, but it was not the first time that DNA was used to catch a rapist. The first time DNA was used to identify the perpetrator of a crime was in England. Detective Chief Superintendent David Baker asked a local scientist for help identifying the owner of a DNA sample taken from a crime scene after Linda Mann and Don Ashworth were, were found raped and murdered. Detective Baker thought that they might have their guy after a man claimed to know the whereabouts of the second victim, Don Ashworth. When the police arrested and interrogated him, he admitted to raping and murdering Don, but he insisted he wasn't responsible for Linda's rape or murder. Detective Baker didn't believe him. That's when he remembered hearing about a test that analyzes DNA, and he wondered if it could help determine if the suspect was responsible for both crimes. Detective Baker contacted the inventor of the test, Alec Jeffries. He agreed to help Detective Baker by analyzing the DNA of the suspect and the DNA samples taken from Linda Mann, the first victim, and Don Ashworth, the second victim. After analyzing all three samples, he was able to determine two things. One, the suspect's DNA didn't match those taken from the crime scenes, and two, the DNA collected from both victims was the same. Detective Baker was disappointed that their suspect wasn't the guy, but he wasn't going to give up, so he did try, decided to try and test the DNA of every man ages 18 through 34 in a five mile radius of the crime scene, about 5,000 men. The government was reluctant to fund the half a million dollar investment, but then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher supported the initiative. After 4,000 plus men had willingly submitted their DNA, there still wasn't a match and police were starting to lose hope. Then they got their break. One man had submitted his DNA in place of a friend's. After learning this, the police immediately arrested both men and took a DNA sample from the man who hadn't given a DNA sample yet. His name was Colin Pitchfork and his DNA was a match. The case was what inspired Florida prosecutors to use DNA evidence in their case against Tommy Lee Andrews. On February 6, 1988, Tommy Lee Andrews was convicted of multiple charges with the help of the DNA fingerprint held within his blood. Andrews was 24 years old when he broke into the home of a 27-year-old woman named Karen Monroe on February 21st, 1987. He testified that he had never left his apartment that night, but the woman atta attacked identified him during the trial as her attacker. Life Codes Incorporated, a genetic research company, performed three DNA tests at the request of Florida prosecutors. They tested samples of semen taken from the victim after she was attacked. They also tested a sample of her blood, and finally they tested a sample taken from Tommy Lee Andrews after his arrest. The man who performed the actual test was Alan Guisti, a forensic scientist for Life Codes Incorporated. He had performed the test over 200 times and held a Bachelor's of Science in Biology from Yale. 
Another specialist employed by Life Codes that was involved in the testing process was Dr. Michael Briard, a geneticist with years of experience in DNA testing and several published academic papers on the subject. He explained that the results of the test indicated that the semen found in the victim was most likely from Tommy Lee Andrews. He testified that the odds it was another person's DNA were less than 1 in 800 million. Another expert witness called by the prosecution was Dr. David E. Huseman, the holder of a PhD in biology and a professor of molecular genetics. He was asked to testify to the reliability of the test, and he explained a brief history of the test me testing method, and he also explained that the test is considered reliable by the scientific community and it had been around or in use for years. After, having, after hearing all the testimony, the jury reached a verdict, and Tommy Lee Andrews became the first ever American to be convicted in a criminal case utilizing DNA evidence. In late October to November 1988, Tommy Lee Andrews filed an appeal with the District Court of Appeal of Florida's 5th District, challenging the admissibility of DNA evidence. In a summary of the opinion issued by Judge Orfinger, it talks about how the judge felt that it was necessary to answer two questions. One, the admissibility of DNA evidence in criminal trials, and two, the reliability of the methods used by life codes. To answer the first question, Judge Orfinger applied methods established by the United States Supreme Court for determining admissibility of new forms of evidence. He used several different methods, but they all have several similarities. Basically, the new form of evidence needs to be reliable, both in the scientific principle behind the test and the method used. It also needs to be accepted by the scientific community that the method belongs to. And the results from the test need to help the jury come to a more informed, unbiased decision. Judge Orfinger ruled that he agreed with the ruling judge on the Andrews case and that the testing method used satisfied all the requirements. In the summary of his opinion, he talks about how a qualified expert witness testified that the methods used were in fact reliable. It was for these reasons that Judge Orfinger denied Tommy Lee Andrews' request for a retrial, therefore solidifying the use of DNA evidence. Over the last decade, forensic evidence has been relied upon in over 6,800 cases. A review of current law reveals that almost every state in the United States has embraced and institutionalized the utilization of DNA fingerprinting in the serving of justice. Just a decade after the Andrews' case, all 50 states had laws that required DNA samples from at least all convicted sex offenders. Virginia became the first state in the U.S. to require DNA testing in criminal investigations, which was put into place in 1989. The National DNA Index System was established in October of 1998. The Tommy Lee Andrews case revolutionized future investigations because it introduced a completely new way to identify criminals. As previously mentioned, just a year after Andrews' conviction, a National DNA Index System was created in the U.S and the state of Virginia required certain convicts to submit DNA fingerprints. Another way this frontier has revolutionized the process of the criminal justice system is by helping to exonerate those who were wrongfully convicted. The Innocence Project works to free the innocent, prevent wrongful convictions, and create a fair, compassionate, and equitable system of justice for everyone. That quote is from the innocentproject.org's homepage. The Innocence Project uses DNA evidence to exonerate those who have been wrongfully convicted. DNA evidence hasn't only revolutionized how criminals are identified, but it has also helped to better our justice system by righting wrongs.